everyone. Welcome back to Cardboard from Mars. I'm Nima, and that is Nate. The main guy. The main guy. But for how long? <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome back. Uh, we're looking at the next episode of Corporation Videos. We're going to look at the last four corporations in the base game. So what do we got, Nate? What, are you excited for this? Are you pumped? Oh, I'm pumped, man. I, this is, uh, I guess, just to mark this for all posterity, it's sort of our quarantine uh, strategy video. That's right. Uh, we're, uh, we're all stuck in the house with the, the COVID pandemic, just like everyone else. So hopefully you'll take some enjoyment from this and maybe learn something about terraforming Mars in the meantime. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's get it going. Let's kick it off with... Uh, Tractor, Nima. Yeah. So with Tractor, we start with a whopping 60 cash. And the bonus effect allows you to play any Earth Tag card for three cheaper. And you also start off with an Earth Tag. Yeah. All right, Nate. So what's what's the skinny with Tractor? Well, so what I would say with Tractor, just off the bat, is that 60 cash, I, I believe, is the highest starting cash in mega credits of any of the base corporations. So uh, we talked about some of the other corporations that if you combine steel and mega credits, they might get a little higher. But uh, Tractor starts off with a whopping 60. And that's that's a lot. Um, and just starting with so much cash gives you a lot of flexibility because you can take a lot of cards out of the uh, opening 10 and you can and you still have enough to play many of them. So um, that's that's probably the best Thing about Tractor. Um, in terms of its ability, paying less for Earth tags, that's okay. Um, it, you know, there are something, I think we, we counted them all up, there's something like 20 Earth tag cards in the game. Yeah. And some of the Earth tag cards are quite good. Um, I mean, you know, there's, there's just a lot of just um, good Earth tags, uh, like Earth Catapult, for example. I mean, that card's just really good. But they... The thing about Tractor is that you don't play Earth Tags as a strategy, really. I mean, we talked about this in one of our other videos as well. They're just kind of good cards, and the fact that you get a bonus on them is, is nice, but it's not it's not like you're going to collect Earth Tags the way that you collect Jovian Tags, for example. Right. Yeah, the way, the way I look at Tractor is, like, the bonus effect is not very strong, but that gets balanced by the fact that you start with so much money. Right, right. So, yeah, Nate's absolutely right. You can do a, basically anything you want at the beginning of the game here. The The downside of Tractor, though, at least as far as its starting setup, is that there's no production of anything, right? And that's, of course, that's pretty much as, as it should be, given you have 60 money. Um, you can probably find some pretty decent production in your starting hand with that kind of money. Yeah, for sure. And I, I think that, uh, as we've mentioned before, having a lot of uh, mega credits early is much better, right? Because the way that the game, it's an engine builder, is that if you get your engine set early, you have more generations to benefit from it. So yeah. like if you if one of your opening cards uh, is, um, you know, like the titanium mine, for example, um, you know, this costs you three to keep and seven to play. And so that's like starting with 50 credits and one titanium production, right? Which is already a little bit better than Saturn System starts with, for example. So, I mean, the idea is that with Tractor, you have you have so much money that you should be able to overcome some of the, you know, the other deficits. That, I mean, the fact that you don't start with anything else just because you have so much. Right, yeah. So, like, we, you know, we talked about Earth Tag, so... What are some of the good Earth Tag cards to play here? Well, um, yeah, so the way I would think about uh, Tractor is that there are a couple of, like, very good... Well, I mean, they're just a couple of good combo pieces. So, like, for example, um, if you get basically any Earth Tag that is, you know, relatively cheap or, like, kind of cheap to mid-range but also has a, an Earth Tag, they just get better with Tractor. So, for example, right. um, you know, like one one classic card is like sponsors. For example, like this card's okay if you play it early. If you have to buy it and play it, it's nine credits. 
But if you're a Teractor, you just, you know, you, you're paying six. And that that's like a pretty good deal for this card, right? So all of these sort of like cheap to mid-range, it's like mid-range cards are just better with, with Teractor. And that's, you know, like another one would be Acquired Company, for example. Like this card, it's just good. And I, I, I should mention that the the key here is that it's they're the cheaper cards, right? Because the three yeah. credit discount is a bigger percentage of a cheap card than it is of a really expensive card. Like, you know, some of these other ones that are, that are really expensive that, um, you know, that uh, tractor plays something like, uh, you know, immigration shuttles or something like that. Um, you know, like this card, yeah, going from 31 to 28, uh, that's good, but it's it's definitely not as big as a uh, jump as it is to, on like sponsors, for example, where it really changes the card. Yeah, I mean the the calculus here is you're looking at how quickly can I recoup the cost it play, what it costs for me to play the card, right? So like you can recoup something from sponsors much quicker than you could from this immigration shuttles play. That's right. So in that vein, um, I mean, there's not a ton to talk about with Teractor because Teractor is just a generically good corporation because it has a lot of cash, and yeah. um, you know, but it doesn't it doesn't lend itself to a specific strategy. That's also part of what's good about it. It's flexible. But if, for example, uh, you get something like um, if you're lucky enough to get Earth Office in your opener, like that's amazing, right? Super yeah. Teractor, um, because now you're getting just sharp discounts for all of the Earth tags. Um, and that's that's just that's actually a lot of fun to play with because all of a sudden every almost every single Earth tag becomes playable if you have Earth Office and Teractor. Right. So you just you just mentioned the Super Teractor. So like, there's the reason that so uh, this kind of a fun concept that uh, we heard recently, which is Super Teractor. Basically, what it means is we're increasing the benefit of the Earth tag play here, so it's already cheaper. To uh, by three to play Earth tags right for Teractor, but with Earth Office now it's minus six, which is crazy discount for any card. It is. But there's other cards that contribute to Super Teractor, like for example, Media Group I think is one uh, that makes your events cheaper by three. So if you can get um, a minus six discount, and then on top of that, your events are a minus nine discount. If your, I should say, your uh, Earth events, which some there's some very good Earth events, then yeah, it, that's super tractor. You just get crazy discounts on stuff. Yeah, and there, it's actually worth noting there are there are quite a few Earth events. I mean, there's there's right. quite a few of them out there. So, um, yeah, I mean, look at Media Group though. This Media Group's like the perfect example of a card. I mean, this card's just good in general. Um, I mean, I, I would play it with almost any of the corporations, but it's it's basically free if you're Super Teractor. It costs you three credits. Like you're you're gonna. I mean, that's just so cheap to get that down. I mean, it makes all of these cheap Earth Tag cards just really really a lot better. There's a couple other things, um, like kind of just things to think about. Um, number one, there's um, Investment Loan. I mean, this is a card which. Um, yeah, I I play this card if I'm playing uh, if I'm playing um, Teractor. I mean, it basically costs you three credits to buy it, and if you draw it for free, then it's just like free money. Um, this card's great. Um, and then another one to keep an eye out for, which I I definitely do, you know, anyway. But if you're playing Teractor, is Cartel. Yeah. Um, you can get some just really busted starts with Teractor if you have Cartel in your opener. Um, there's, there are just a, a pretty high number of, of cheap Earth Tag type cards, like Media Group, we just looked at them, sponsors, things like that. And you, you really can, you can you can play Cartel early and get a bump of four or five if, you're, um, if you have it. If you have this card in your hand, there's a lot of cards that I don't normally play that I would consider playing. Um, things like Nuclear Zone, for example. Um, you know, this card, I don't love this card, but if you play it early and you have Cartel, it's pretty good. You get a bump of two to your economy. Uh, you get a tile on the board, which gets you some cash back or some resources. And then you, if you're playing cartel with it afterwards, you get a bump, an extra bump for your earth tag. So, I mean, there basically, if you have cartel in your hand, almost all of the earth tags uh, become pretty good. 
Uh, I, I did want to. I do want to kind of talk a little bit more about cartel, like as far as its value, because um, it, it costs what? What was it like ten? It costs eight. eight. Yeah. So for Tractor, at at worst, it costs five. Well, plus three to buy it. Um, so, like, I wouldn't play this unless you had what, like, maybe like three Earth tags. You start with one, so that's good. And this counts as one of them, right? So, um, but you know, it, this is not worth it if you, to me, if you play with just like onesie twosie. It what just depends think? on when you draw it. I mean, yeah. if you if you have Cartel and you're playing Teractor, it's essentially sponsors from turn one, right? Because you get three yeah. off and you already have two tags because you have Teractor's tag and the Cartel tag. So this card is essentially at its worst if you're playing Teractor is just sponsors, which you would play on turn one with almost sure. any corporation. But, um, you know, it can be... It can be one of the best cards in the game. I mean, if you if you get a bump of six off of this and on turn well, two yeah. or something, I mean, it could be amazing. I mean, if if you you know, and again, if you're playing Super Tractor and it basically costs you five to play it, to buy it and then play it, you know, you might you might play this all the way up into Generation Eight, you know, because if you get a bump of six or something like that, you're going to make it back in two turns. Anyway, the thing with Cartel is I think you're exactly right, which is that the value of this card goes up and down depending on the time of the game and what kind of discounts you're going to get off it and how much of yeah. a bump you're going to get. So you just need to do some math. And in general, it's not enough to just make a couple credits. Um, you you, you want to clear like, you know, kind of the 10 credit bar by the end of the game because... Um, again, credits are worth more early than they are late. So if you're there's an opportunity cost to playing something in the mid game, you know. So if you're not going to make a lot of money off it, I wouldn't play it. Yep, that is a really good point. It is, yeah, it's basically sponsors. That's I hadn't thought about that that way. That's cool. So like, what what um are there any natural milestones for Tractor to follow? Not really. I mean, Tractor, um, it's a pretty flexible corporation just because you start with a lot of cash, which means that depending on the other cards in your hand, you could you could go for mayor, you could go for gardener, you, you know, yeah. you know, so you have a lot of flexibility there. Um, there. There is no clear milestone for for Tractor, just a lot of money. Yeah, I totally agree. In, in a lot of ways, Tractor is a very cut and dry, simple corporation to play. It's pretty good for new players. And yeah, it, it just works well. Um, yeah, is there anything else to say about it? No, I mean, what do you, what would you rate it, Nima? What do you, what are you thinking about Teractor? Yeah, um, Teractor, I'd probably give Teractor a B plus. Really that high? Yeah, I think so. Like, just how, it's really flexible, right? Um, anything out of your starting hand you can pretty much do. What about you? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I mean, it. I feel like, it's good. It's definitely a solid corporation. I mean, I think it's a solid, it's at least a B in my mind. Um, it also has a little bit of a combo feel to it because if you get, if you get some of these key cards early, um, it, can, it can be really good. I mean, if you just have a handful of these cards, yeah, um, yeah I mean, Super Tractor can just be devastating. Um, so, so I, I would say I, I would say it's kind of it's it's baseline is a B, but if depending on if you have some of those combo pieces in your or in your opener, it it, it can be quite strong. Um, yeah. It's you just don't make as much money over the course of the game with Teractor that you that as you do with like some of the other ones we've talked about that are tier one like Credit Core or. Um, you know, even interplanetary cinematics. I mean, I in general when I play cinematics, I, I make more money off of the events payoff than I do with Teractor's bonuses. So, right. I you know, it, it's okay. I think it's a B to a B plus, and it just a lot depends on the cards that you got. I like it. Okay. Yeah, it's a, we generally enjoy playing Teractor. It's not maybe the most fun. It get, it gets really fun when you get some of the super director cards, but otherwise it's yeah, I mean that's kind of a that's kind of a good thing to bring up is like do you enjoy playing Tractor? Do you enjoy playing this corp? 
I mean, this corp, if, if you have, if it starts to feel like a combo, like a combo corporation and you get some of the pieces, then it's fun. Yeah. But if it's just like, oh, I just got some generic like cards and I, you know, standard project at a power and played a city or, you know, then, then it gets boring pretty quickly because it doesn't, you know, you, it's not like the whole game is then just like playing your cards rather than figuring out you know how the cards change in value based on the corporation's ability you know and we've talked about this but i just love mining mining right or um, you know mining uh, guild because guild, yeah. because it forces you to rethink every single card right interactor is yeah. the anti-mining guild it's just like you just <laughs> right. got a bunch of money and you just play stuff you know it's like okay yeah so uh, yeah i would say probably the same thing it's like it's just kind of vanilla it's it's whatever like you can have fun playing it certainly but the corporation uh, in and of itself is not that fun. Yeah. Anyway, so what do we got next? All right, so um, next up we've got UNMI, oh United boy. Nations Mars Initiative. AKA the best core. <laughs> So, do you want to just right. start with the rating? Should we start with the rating on this one and then <laughs> just, just, just move, move on? on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All um, right. So UNMI, you start with a measly 40 credits. Uh, your action is the star here. You spend three money to bump the TR, your terraforming rating, but only if you have previously bumped the TR before that. You start with an earth tag too. Okay, Nate, what do you think about UNMI? Okay, um, UNMI is is tough. I mean, I think let's just get it out of the way. I mean, we'll come back to the ratings, but this is definitely one of the weaker corporations. It it is it is hard to play UNMI well, and yep. there's a couple reasons for that. Um, number one, you know, the ability is is potentially powerful but very restrictive, right? Yeah. So. If you think about the way that the engines work in this game, just like what we were talking about before, you really, really, really need to be hitting this bonus early, right? So if you if you raise your TR on turn one, um, you know you're gonna make nine credits or ten credits over the course of the game, and it costs you three. So you've you've boosted your economy by six or like seven or eight or something like that, which is pretty good. Yeah. But every generation that goes on after that, you're making less money off of that. Mm -hmm. Now, you do get points for it. And so that's good, right? Because you're, you're getting a TR. But there's, again, an opportunity cost. So, like, if you, you know, you really, really, really are strongly emphasized in this corporation to be terraforming early rather than engine building. And so, you know, like, imagine you're playing... Um, you play Titanium Mine on turn one. It cost you 10 credits to make it. You got 30 cash back over the course of the, of the game. So you netted 20 cash with Titanium Mine. Like United Nations basically caps you at like eight or nine credits off that play early, but um, you get a point for it. But the problem is like all that engine building that other corporations do early like by generations 10 and 11, you, you, they're just scoring, you know, 10, 12, 15 points a generation, whereas UNMI has been stunted a little bit. I mean, I mean, I feel like it's just really hard to, to make it work because you, you have to terraform like every generation and use the ability. It's just not easy to do that. Yeah. And three credits doesn't seem like a lot, but that can that really adds up. Like it, it takes away money you need to be doing other stuff like building your engine. Oh, completely, uh, completely. So, I mean, for example, like the cards that you want with UNMI, like you want to play something like, you know, like if you have UNMI and this is like the one time I would play Flooding, right? Because early on, this card's actually good with UNMI. It's cheap, it lets you activate the, the UNMI ability and you get some tile placement bonuses early, either some cards or some money back. So like flooding is the type of card that you really want with UNMI early because it's gonna let you, it's gonna let you not only develop your engine because this is cheap, you'll still have enough money to do something else, but it'll also let you activate UNMI's ability. Right, I, I would say another card in that vein as far as early starting cards is Black Polar Dust, which sounds crazy like, 
This is normally a card we would never recommend playing. Um, but UNMI, it's probably the only corp we would say, yeah, you should you should probably do this. Like, you're gonna get hit pretty hard with that minus two, but you'll make it back up with the t with bumping TR and whatnot. On top of that, you get that ocean, which, which lets you bump your TR. But really importantly, it builds you some kind of an engine with that heat production. Yeah, and what you're getting at is that there's basically two categories of cards that are good with UNMI. There's like the one-shot terraforming cards that are cheaper than standard projects, like flooding, which I just showed you. And then there's like these ones that build your engine such that you can get a TR bump every turn passively. And that's, that's obviously the best, right? Because if you get a heat bump every generation, now UNMI's ability is looking pretty good. And so yeah. like in that vein, Black Polar Dust is like a good one. Um, you know, another one that's, that's quite good early on, um, you know, just classic Mohole area, um, which, you know, particularly if you're getting some money back is a pretty good ratio to cost uh, early. Um, you know, another, you know, uh, another one like that would be, you know, just kind of same, same category would be something like carbonate processing. Um, interestingly, yeah, nice cheap. yeah, go ahead. Sorry, it's, it's, it's nice and cheap to play that too. Well, except for the power cost. Right. And so you would need, you know, you're going to want to combo this with like something that's like a cheap power, but I, I would definitely do it if you could get your heat bumps up quickly. That, that really helps. Um, one thing which I which I think is like I've I've definitely seen people do this and it it can work but it's pretty tough to make it work is Saleta. It's just so expensive. I mean it, it does give you a TR bump kind of every turn, um, but it's it just really it can be cripplingly expensive. Yeah, I think I think a better option than Saleta is Aquifer pumping. So like, Aquifer pumping lets you get oceans out pretty cheaply. So normally eight money, like this is an expensive card to get out, no doubt. Um, this becomes much better when you have steel for a lot of reasons. Um, so the steel lets you get the card out cheaper, but then it lets you use the ability cheaper too. So this is a good way to get that TR bump to activate your ability. Yeah, and so you're getting into like the third category, which are like these repeatable terraforming things like uh, aquifer pumping. Another one is you know, like something like a water splitting plant, you know, if you have a way to get one of these engines going, uh, you know, it, they're all the same, right? Like whether you're, you know, whether you're building a heat engine or an, an energy engine or a, a plant engine, um, if you can get something that gives you a passive terraforming bump every generation, that's, that's what you want to be doing with UNMI. I will yeah. mention that because you're so crimped for cash, um, I don't always love taking these uh, these cards early, but I would definitely consider taking investment loan or indentured workers with UNMI. Like you, you just need more starting money to make this work because you you really have to be terraforming to activate that ability every generation. Yeah, forty money is just so low. Yeah, I mean, in in retrospect, I mean, I, I don't I don't know what the they must have play tested this a lot, but I, I feel like UNMI, you could probably start this with 50 cash and and not, or even, even maybe a little more. Um, or you could start it with 40 cash and make the ability only two to activate, two credits. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I just, I feel like this corporation's a little nerfed. Um, the, the other thing I don't like about UNMI is that you, you really... You have to be racing, be, because you're terraforming every turn, you're trying to make a fast game, right? Like that's basically what you're trying to do with UNMI, because you're, you're going to, you're, you're gonna terraform every, try and terraform every generation. Yep. So the problem is that sometimes, if you're the UNMI play and you're trying to play a fast game and you play two engine builders, they're just gonna crush you on turn 12. Totally. And so like the problem is you can't control that. Um, you're, you're basically dependent on hoping that a, one of the remaining players decides to play a little bit of a faster game. Yeah, you, you hit the nail on the head. That's exactly the biggest problem with UNMI is you benefit, to, to sum up what you basically just said, you benefit from the game ending quickly, but you're going to have no ability to do that. You, 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 are, you, cannot, 
you're not going to be able to terraform the planet like the other corps are going to be able to. Well, you, you, I mean, you're going to try and terraform a lot, but like you won't be able to do it yourself, right? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's so, I mean, whereas if like, if you contrast that with like Tharsis, you know, or uh, we're going to talk about Tharsis a little bit later, but so maybe we talk about a different corporation, just like Credit Core, right? Credit Core can play a fast game and it can play a long game. And you can decide, you can look at the board halfway through with Credit Core, half, you know, on generation five, and you can make an assessment like, okay, this game's ending early. Like I need to, I need to start, you know, moving towards points. You know, whereas yeah. UNMI, it, it doesn't, it can't really play the long game that well unless it just gets a, an incredibly lucky broken start. Like if you, if you're able to get like a, an every generation terraforming thing going really quickly or something, then it kind of morphs into a normal corporation. But that just doesn't happen most of the time. Yeah, I mean, how, how often have you seen UNMI win a game? Almost never. I mean, I, I've seen it. I've seen it come close a lot. You know, like so if if it if it does successfully end the game on Gen Ten, um, you know, like if it's able to push pretty quickly in a three player game and end it. It can be close, yeah. um, but the problem is it just always seems to come up a little bit short because it's playing against some of these more flexible, powerful corporations that can just uh, like identify, okay, this is going to be a short game, and then they just change their strategy, and they're just better. Right. Uh, yes. I w we should talk about milestones and awards. Yep. I was about to say that. So, yeah, I think that the natural milestone here, of course, is Terraformer, right? Uh, this is pretty much the only one you're going to have a good shot at. And by the way, I, I should say you should pretty easily get Terraformer with UNMI. Would you agree with that? I, I would, although I, I will say that Terraformer is one of the harder, uh, it's, it's generally one of the harder milestones to achieve. Yeah. Uh, because if you're playing in a game with one of the ground based corporations, you know, Builder, Gardener, and Mayor go, can go very quickly. And so even if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing with UNMI, it can be hard to, to race people to Terraformer if they're, if they're pretty, you know, if they're moving quickly towards those other ones. Yeah, I, I would say, though, that typically by the time the third milestone has been claimed, people's TR is usually in the low 30s anyway. Would you agree with that? Uh, it, that just depends, right? Because a lot of times the third milestone isn't claimed because there's no pressure on the other ones, right? I mean, yeah, I guess that's true. I, I'm just, I guess I'm speaking anecdotally from what I've observed, but like my, my point being, if you've got UNMI's ability, it should make it considerably easier to get to Terraformer. Yeah, I, I, that's true. Although the problem for UNMI is that it doesn't want to be playing things like giant ice asteroid. Right, like that's that's yeah. You, I mean, what you want to be doing with UNMI is playing cheap, terraforming every generation, not like dumping it all onto the board. Right. And so, I mean, if you if 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 UNMI plays giant ice asteroids, probably not going to get terraformer because it, it wasted a whole turn. You know, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it'd be able to get there, but I don't know. I, terraformer is hard. Like, if somebody wants planner, they can get it. They can just take eight cards out of their opening hand and they can play something on the ocean tile and they can take four out of the neck. I mean, right, like you can take you can reliably take planner on Gen 3 if you want. You can, you know, I mean, Mayor and Gardener, it's actually pretty easy to get those done if you really if you're really, you know, putting your mind to it. Like you can literally play a city on turn one and then realize that someone's getting close to a milestone, you're gonna get locked out and just buy a city and then buy one on your next generation. You've got, I mean, like the, the point is, is that it's easier to achieve these other milestones. UNMI, it's, I mean, Terraformer is hard to achieve. You can't just decide you're gonna do it and then be there. Like it takes a fair amount of concerted work and it's pretty well advertised. So people can time kind of sneaking in under you if they want to. Yeah, I, I agree with that. It's. It takes more time to achieve Terraformer, I agree. All right, well, um, I, br I believe that brings us to the rating. What would you give UNMI as far as scores? UNMI just sucks. Like, I, I, <laughs> I, I hate UNMI. And here, here's why. I actually don't mind playing corporations that are bad. 
Um, you know, like I don't think mining guild is that great. It's I think it's pretty hard to win with mining guild. I actually I would say I mean obviously if you have an amazing hand, but um, but mining guild is fun. UNMI not only is it is it a crappy corporation, but it's not fun to play, right? Like you you're so incentivized to like play this just like you know bread and butter type of game where you're you know you like a lot of times your best play is standard project the heat and use the ability and it's just it's not fun it's not fun to play um you the 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 the, you start with very little cash which means that even if you have good cards in your opener you feel like you're often you know stretching to to activate its ability and play your engine cards um the milestones and awards are difficult they don't line up with it um that well and it's just and you can't it's hard to play a long game so i mean there's just like nothing redeeming about it i like the color blue (laughs) i mean i did like that blue is my favorite color so i like the banner on there but that's about it so pretty yeah, look at your blue on blue. I can tell. I mean, you know. <laughs> okay, so what's your what's your score? I think it's I think it's a straight D minus. I mean, I, I don't think there's a flat F in any of the corporations. And let me be clear about this: like, you can win with UNMI. I'm not saying it's a you know I don't you know it it has happened. I have won with UNMI before, but um, it has to be one of the worst corporations, if not the worst corporation, out of the out of the opening set. Yeah, I, I'm there with you. I, I'd, I'd give it a D. It's it, it pretty much terrible. You said it. You said it all. So I don't need to reiterate anything. Yeah. Um, okay. I mean, here's so. here's an interesting thought though. What what amount of starting money would you need to give UNMI, like yeah. house rules UNMI starting money to make it to a level that you would you would like consider taking it over, say like a mid tier corporation. And I don't think any less than 50. Definitely not the less than 50, in my opinion. It might even be 55. Yeah. Yeah. Poor UNMI. Just no love. I'm, I'm curious what you think the over-under is. So, like, if, if we have our viewers put in, you know, like, if you were going to set the, the over-under for UNMI... On, on credits to make it like a B what would you what would you have said that oh man a B I mean for it to be a B I would need like 60 like Teractor um, well I like to be honest this ability is much better than Teractor's ability it, it is so yeah maybe like a 55 or something I would put the over under at 51 credits <laughs> I think like if, 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 you know, like, we'll see what people say in the comments, but I, I think if, if you started UNMI with 51 credits, yeah, you might see people play that a little bit more. Yeah, let us know what you guys think. I mean, that would basically let you take four more cards out of your opener. Right. You know, and still have a, a viable turn one. So. Right, all right, what do we got next? All right, so let's take a quick look here. Our next one. Is Thorgate. Okay, Thorgate. Well, we start with 48 money. We start with an energy production. And then bonus effect is whenever you're playing a, a card with a power tag on it or the standard project uh, power plant, you pay three less credits for it, three fewer credits for it. All right, Nate, what do you think about Thorgate? Okay, Thorgate. I actually think Thorgate is is decent. Um, I would consider this to be sort of a mid-tier uh, corporation. Uh, we'll get to the grades later. But if you think about that energy production, a standard project energy is, is 11. So if you add 11 to 48, you're at 59. And its ability, actually very similar, three off for... Um, power tags very similar to Teractor. Yeah. So in some ways, Thorgate and Teractor are somewhat mirrors of each other. I mean, they they start with fairly equivalent starting cash, 
and their abilities are pretty similar. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, I will say though that the having a power tag can in your opener can be very good. Um, there are a lot of cards that you'd want to play right away that require power, and and if you know if you have some of those those cards in your opener, they can be really good. So, for example, um, building industries, right? Like if you have this card in your opener with Thorgate, like that's really good. I mean, you you got a bump of four to your economy for nine credits if you if you bought this out of your opener. Um, I mean that's a that's a good start. Yeah, that that's really one of the best cards you could possibly get as Thorgate to start. Um, and an, another another great card, like any a lot of the cities I should say are really good, but especially like Cupola City is a really excellent one to start off with. Yeah, I mean again, um, just any of these cards that typically require a power, it usually takes you some some time or or money or whatever to get that power down, and you just start with it. It's it's it can be quite good. Yeah, like I, for a long time, I, I considered, you know, Thorgate to be, and I think I even said this in one of our other videos. It's it, it pairs well with sort of ground game strategies, just just because it's easier for you to get power cards down. So like, yeah, you can play the city cards much easier as Thorgate. Yeah, and it, it, I think you raise a good co uh, point with Thorgate because. Um, the the bonus that you get on power cards it, it is it's significant you know like a card like power plant I mean this card I mean it's basically four credits like that's a super cheap power and you get a building tag with that um, there's other good cards you know like um, the ones that have uh, you know requirements like fusion power for example like you start Thorgate has a power tag like this card is yeah. quite good I mean look at the tags on this thing like. It's got a building tag, a science tag. It gives you three power, and the whole thing costs you fourteen because you get three off. You know, yeah. I mean, that's that's a that's a lot of value for for a for a fourteen credit card. Um, yeah, and that right there, that that just got you something like Ironworks, right? Um, that amount of power. Yeah, so that's a good that's a good point. So you know, obviously this thing, uh, Thorgate, with all the power. It's good to have a way to use that power, and you can use it to play cities, or you can play these cards like building industries, like I showed you, or or you can build these kind of like terraforming uh, generators, like ironworks. Um, so that you can definitely look out for that. I mean, it's also worth considering. Um, you can just standard project a power for eight, which is pretty cheap. So that that often will get you over the hump on these like ironworks cards, where maybe you've got three power or something, and normally you don't want to spend eleven to standard project, but eight is pretty good. Yeah, and then pair that with standard technology, and then it basically costs you five. Yeah, so I actually think standard tech. It's it's worth noting this. I I, I you and I played a game. I think we I think it's on. I think it's on. Um, I believe so. I think it's uploaded, but. We uh, we didn't have a great hand. We were playing Thorgate. Uh, I think UNMI was our other option, so we just like obviously we can't play that. Um, and we got standard technology with Thorgate, and I mean you get just get some super cheap power. I mean you can you can basically just standard standard project your way up into some pretty high power uh, levels, and then use it for whatever you want. Uh, that was a good combo. Yeah, that worked out pretty well for us. I don't think we won that game, but it was it was really cool though. Yeah. Kind of, so like, what's what's kind of another category of cars we need to look at? Like, you actually you brought up Electro Catapult. Why don't we talk about that real quick? Yeah, Electro Catapult's just like amazing. Um, I mean, obviously, if you're playing this on turn one, you you want to do something to get steel and. Uh, plants so that you can sell them um so i mean it is possible to get this card out too early <laughs> right yeah. i mean um but electro catapult is just an example of a type of card that's that's good in your opener if you have some power right if you can get that out with like mine or something that's super nice um so let's let's talk about one aspect of this corp that a lot of people might overlook and that is some of the hate cards involved here so what can happen if you've got some power production going is 
you know, normally you, you think of the hate car as mostly hitting plants, which they do, but there are a few that will hit your power and it can be, I don't, I don't know if I want to say devastating, but it can be pretty bad. So if someone energy taps you turn one before you even get a chance to use it, that's a big downside. You, you lost a big advantage by playing Thorgate that way. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I would go so far as to say that's pretty devastating. I mean, um, I mean, it's not, it's not the end of the world. It costs you eight credits to, to, um, to get a power, but eight credits early in the game. I mean, that's, that's an important eight credits, you know? And so, um, yeah, I mean, you're, you're highly, highly incentivized to, to use that power for production early, you know? So, um, you're, it's unlikely that people will take energy tapping out of their opening ten. It's not it's not impossible. Um, I I you know like it it definitely has to feel bad if you're playing Thorgate yeah. and you're like the third player, and somebody without knowing what any of the corporations was took energy tapping out and right. then taps you before you can. I mean. <laughs> that that is devastating. Um, that that like gets right into the you know you're playing Phobolog and you go and you and then turns out Saturn Systems is in the game and you're like you know play Titanium Mine and then hit you with Asteroid Mining Consortium. I mean that feels really bad if you're right. Saturn Systems. But um, usually this this type of card it's energy tapping and then the other one is um, Power Supply Consortium. Usually these cards are coming out gens two and three, and so you once people know that you're playing Thorgate and they see that power, so you you do want to use that power quickly. Yeah. Um, it, it's less of an issue later in the game because at that point you've you've ramped up, you probably have some spare power, but um, you really, really, really on turn one, you want to use that power to boost your production. Uh, but I w I wouldn't discount how terrible it is later on in the game either, though. Like say you know say you've built up to like f four energy and you're using ironworks and someone hits you for one of them, well now you got to spend at minimum eight to get it back up and that kind of sucks you know what I mean? It does yeah, I mean the thing is in the middle game you know you you've probably you know you know if you're playing that corporation you you've probably played some of these other cards you know you you peroxide power you have some of these other things. Often it's it, you have a surplus of power in the mid game with Thorgate, but um, you're you're totally right. Like I mean, it just it, it sucks to get your power hit any time, you know. But particularly in the beginning, like that that can just be very devastating. Yeah, I mean, imagine you have building industries in your hand, and so someone hits you before you play it. You've effectively lost eight credits for the power, you know, the, the and then you've lost an additional four credits. Of production you know and then next turn you're gonna play the eight and then delay another turn on production. like it, it, it really adds up like you really want to get that city down early in turn one right yeah there there is another fun card to mention that can benefit you as Thorgate and that is hackers yeah hackers are sweet so I I used to not like hackers and I, I wouldn't play it very much um, but if you have early power, like this, this card is really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it it is a it is a huge. If you play this on turn one against somebody, I mean, it it is a big swing. I mean, you just took twenty credits from somebody over the course of the game, um, and added yourself twenty. I mean, that's 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 pretty good. I mean, you you know. Yeah, we've seen this card ruin people's games for sure. <laughs> for sure. I mean, this definitely goes into the category of like board flipping cards. You know, you're just like, yeah, come right. on, you know, like. Um, <laughs> I mean, but, it's ruined our games before. I can I can say that. Yeah, I mean, you know, I I don't know if I would. You know, I I wouldn't. If I had other options that I thought were better, I, I might take those over hackers. I mean, it just depends on how sort of antagonistic a game you want to play. Yeah. There is a disadvantage to making yourself like public enemy number one on turn one. Like if you hack somebody, you know you're going to incur their their hate for the rest of the game. Um, like if you yeah. have if you have building industries, I would just ditch hackers and play building industries. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, on the other and hand, it, this is the kind of card like if you're playing with a group of players that you know and you know there's like a kingpin, 
you know, this card's going to get played against that person. Like they're, you know, like you're going to be like, oh yeah, I'm gunning for usually me, uh, which is annoying. <laughs> Um, but you know, I, the number of times that I've gotten hacked recently, it's a lot. Yeah. I have a burner account now on, uh, on Steam <laughs> so that nobody knows what I'm playing with my burner account so I can be anonymous. Nice. nice. Yeah. That's smart. Um, yeah. The, the, and the thing with that is whenever you take down one person, the third person gets stronger, right? That's right. So. That's that's kind of the downside of playing these hate cards. I mean, the thing is, hackers is different. Is doesn't quite fit that mold because, um, you know, like some of the hate cards, they just cost you money and they hurt somebody else, and the third player is just like, okay, cool, they can fight each other. Hackers does also make you a lot of money, right? Like this costs right. you six to play, and it's going to make you twenty over the course of the game. You're going to, you know, if you play it on turn one, you're going to net fourteen. Like that's pretty good. And with that 14 cash, you are going to score more than a point. So, I mean, it, 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 is, it is a net positive for the person who plays it. Right. So let's talk about milestones that Thorgate can get into. So I would say the, the natural milestones for Thorgate are Builder and Mayor. So Builder, because I mean, if you guys have been paying attention, a lot of the cards we've been bringing up have building tags on them. A lot of the power cards do... And then also the the city cards do if you're getting into a more of a ground game sort of a deal. And then of course, mayor, of course, you know, the 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 power, the ability to get power out allows you to build cities uh, cheaper and easier. So I would say those are your natural milestones. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I do. Um, I mean, Thorgate's flexible. It, it can really go for any of them. If you get one of the um, if you get like one of the you know water splitting plant type of things going, you you could end up in terraformer. Um, if you just you know get some plants or you have a city and you get some you know plant cards going down stuff like that, you could get garden. I mean, you could basically go for any of them. Um, one thing that's worth noting is that there are corporations that are that are really heavily geared towards certain milestones. So like if you're playing against mining guild, yeah, okay maybe you shouldn't go for builder in that game. Like if you have a really yeah. good builder hand, then fine, go ahead. But you're 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 pretty far behind to start, and that's one you might want to go for mayor, for example. So, you know, you, you should look at who you're playing against and then tailor the milestone to both the hand that you have and the other the other corporations that are on the board. Yep. That's a good point. All right, anything else to say about Thorgate? Um, no, uh, I think we're, what, you know, what are you, what are you thinking in terms of rating it? Yeah, Thorgate's tough. Um, I kind of want to give it like a B minus. Um, starting money is not great. The starting power is good. I, I guess I just feel like Thorgate's a little bit more dependent on your starting hand than some corpse. What do you think? Yeah, totally agree. Um, you know, basically, with Thorgate, you want um, you really want some way to use that power early for all the reasons that we just talked about, right? Like, if you can convert that that uh, you know eleven credits that you got for free. I mean, I know it's technically eight, but but in, in it's worth eleven if you're just like looking at it on your on on its face value. If you can convert that into economy early. And a building tag in a city, for example, you you're, you have a strong start. But if you don't have a way to use that power productively, you, then then it's just okay. Then then you're then you're just starting off without a lot of money. Yeah, I mean that's basically the way I would consider that. Yeah, and then like that that power tag is like okay. You know that can get you into some good stuff, but like, not there's not a lot of great cards that are going to require that power tag. I agree. So, it's, it's so okay. what's what's your what's your grade? Uh, I I think Thorgate's a B. You know, I think it's a pretty solid B. It's it's a totally hmm. playable corporation. You can win with Thorgate. It's good. Um, you know, I don't I don't think it's uh, amazing or anything like that. And it, and it can edge up towards B plus if you have a really good powerful. Um, you know, economy card that uses power early. Well, that's interesting. It's, uh, I mean, like that, that kind of goes with what you were saying before, because that's basically what you were saying about Teractor. Yeah. I think they're very similar corporations. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. 
I mean, I think in a vacuum, I'd rather just have Teractor. Um, you know, but I think Thorgate is also quite quite fine. So if you have you ever got Thorgate and Teractor in a game, you'd be like, ooh, I got all sorts of options here. I feel like the difference between the two, now that we're sort of like dissecting it, is that Teractor does have the ability to kind of move into combo mode, right? Like if you if you get a couple of cards with Teractor that are like key ones, um, you know, like if you get that Earth Office or whatever, suddenly you're now playing a different game and it has it has a ceiling which I think and then all of a sudden you randomly get, you know, uh, cartel or something like that and there's also a, a saturn card that does it miranda resort you know i mean since we're since we're just talking about these things i'll pull them up but um let's see here i i know you're like silently judging me i did type it <laughs> <laughs> nemo what always makes happen? fun of me because there's like a, a feature that you can type in the name of the card on the thing anyway whatever <laughs> But like basically, this is the other. Uh, this is the other um, cartel, right? And so like, if you're playing Teractor, and you, there can just be these things that happen that suddenly vault you up into like, this corporation is is getting a little broken right now. And I, I feel like Thorgate just doesn't really have that potential. It's just good, but th- there are, yeah. there's no card that I'm just like, oh man, I hope I draw this with Thorgate. Yeah, there isn't like make one make one a uh, money production for every like power tag is there i don't think so no no there's there's make more power for power tags right um and there's um yeah but there yeah if if you had a money production for power that would that would be quite quite good yeah that, yeah i guess that's true all right all right so uh b minus from me b from nate uh what's our last corp for today all right, so hold on one sec here. Let me pull this up. I'm going to just click out a couple of these here. I got a lot of photos here. I just wanted you to review Thorgate. Okay, here we yeah, go. There will, be a, there will be a quiz. <laughs> All right, last one is Tharsis, and it looks like my finger got onto the photo there. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well done, well done. Um, it's usually not a problem because I crop it out when we do the, the other type of videos, but... Uh, Somehow that made it in there. <laughs> We're professionals, funny. just it's okay, everyone. That's too us. funny. Um, right, Tharsis Republic, you start with forty money. The first action you must do in a game is place a city. Uh, your bonus effects are when anyone plays a city on Mars. That's important. You get one credit production, and then if you are the person to play that city, you get three money. So if in, and also you start with a building tag. So in effect, you you have forty money and then you get one money production and it, basically forty three money and a money production at the beginning of the game. Right, and a city. And a city. <laughs> right. So and if you if you look at the value of a city, twenty five credits. You're you know forty three and twenty five. You're up into the sixty eight range now. Yeah. Um, plus you got a. A boost of your economy of one, which is going to net you ten credits over the course of the game, ten or eleven. So you're you're basically starting off with something like, you know, eighty cash. I mean, it it just on its face, Tharsis starts you with a lot of resources. Um, Tharsis is those abilities are amazing. Um, it, it is it is hard to to sort of put that into. I mean, when you start to think about how much money Tharsis is going to net you with its ability over the course of the game, it, it it ends up being just a phenomenal amount of money. I mean, part of it is that people are going to play cities. Like, they're, the city cards are good. They, they ramp economy. Um, they give you area control on the board. They net you points. Like, people are going to play cities in this game. And so you're just going to be, you know, passively getting these economy boosts whenever somebody plays a city on the board and also when you do it. So it, it has this sort of Saturn systems quality where some of the really good cards in the game are cards that other people, they're just going to play them and you're just going to benefit. Yeah. Right. So like, what are some of those cards? Like I would say one of the best cards you could probably start with is research outpost. Um, basically 
it's a city, right? But then it makes everything cheaper by one, which doesn't sound like a lot, but over the course of the game, that's going to save you a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, Research Outpost is amazing. Um, I mean, there's, we've mentioned some of these other ones, um, you know, like Cupola City, for example. Yep. Um, that's another one that's quite good. Um, and, I mean, there's even, like, even with, with Tharsis, uh, I'll even play corporate stronghold which is just super cheap it gives you a bump of four you know i mean it's i mean all of these cities are just super good because they're just ridiculously cheap and they give you these massive boosts to your economy um but I, it can't be overemphasized that the power of tharsis is not that that you get the bonus when you play a city it's that you get the bonus when anybody plays a city because you know the thing is, people want to play these cards too. Like, if you have Cupola in your opening hand and you're playing Tharsis, like, it's not like you're just going to be like, oh, guess I'm not playing the city. You're going to yeah. play it. And then they're going to pick up somewhere between six and 10 credits for free off of that, you know? Right. So, um, you know, Tharsis's ability, I, I don't, I haven't like sat down and done the math, but my guess is that, you know, you, you'll easily clear somewhere in the range of, 60 extra credits off of this ability over the course of the game. It might even be more than that. It probably is more. Yeah, I mean, and if you're just saying like, oh, like, compare it to Teractor, where you start with a little bit more money, kind of, although, as we talked about, the value of a city and the starting cash actually puts Tharsis to start with more. But what do you think that ability is going to net you with, with Teractor over the course of a game? Like, yeah. Maybe if if, maybe fifteen credits. If you're lucky, I would if say. you're lucky, I mean, maybe you get lucky and you get one of the like cartel cards and that boosts you a little bit. But like, I mean, Tharsis, you're reliably going to get somewhere in the range of fifty to seventy credits. I mean, that is just ridiculous. Right, and and Tharsis has some pretty gnarly combo uh, potential as well. So let's say you get Immigrant City. Now your ability has now like doubled right um so instead of getting one mega credit production for someone playing a city now you get two that's right i mean that's totally right um i mean you know i, I think you're talking about immigrant city yeah what did i say i think you said immigration shuttles but all, both of those cards are good with uh with with this corporation but yeah i mean you're exactly right nima like if you have immigrant city in your opener and you play this card like on turn one or two, I mean, come on. I mean, that's just, it's it's gross. And like in the same way that I was saying, I kind of like Teractor more than Thorgate because it has combo potential. Like Tharsis, not only is it just amazing just on its face, but it also has combo potential. I mean, that's like, right? Yeah. I mean, if you get Immigrant City and there's just a bunch of cards that are, that are quite good. Like if you know that you're going to be Tharsis, you know that there's going to, it changes the value of a lot of cards. And just the very fact that your Tharsis is going to lean you more heavily into some of these cards. So, for example, you know, like um, Rover Construction, for example, which I like that card. You know, it's okay in general, but all of a sudden, like, if you know you're playing Tharsis, this card's amazing. It just gives you five back every time you play a city, right? Three from yeah. Tharsis' ability and two from this, and just two passively whenever someone plays it. I mean, that card's quite good. Um, there's other ones, like, I've seen... I've seen uh, Martian rails just get you like, I mean, it can be getting 10, 12 credits a yeah. generation for a while. And the thing with Martian rails, again, like anybody can play this card, but you know, if you're, you know, out of your opening 10, if you're Tharsis, that you're, there's going to be a bunch of cities. Like it just changes the way that you value these cards. Um, and other people don't want to like take these cards and then build a bunch of cities because they're just helping you. Right. So, right. I mean, it's, um, it makes it tricky. Um, yeah, so Martian Rails brings kind of a another side aspect of how you want to play Tharsis to light, which is you need power, right? Um, all of, Basically, all these cards we've been talking about require power. So if you can get yourself into some cheap power somehow, and there's lots of ways to do that, you should, because uh, you're going to need it as Tharsis Republic. Yeah, that's a great point. Like, you really want to take uh, power cards with Tharsis. And I would even go so far as to take some of the bad ones. You know, like, um, you know, like you're, 
I don't usually like to play, um, you know, like there's some of them that I don't really love, love that much. Um, I don't, I don't think I have the card here, but it's like nuclear power plant. It's the one that gives you three power, but it gives you minus two to your cash production. I don't oh, usually yeah. like that card that much, but if that's your only option, you're taking that if you're Tharsis, because you want to be able to play these cities and the boost off the cities is so much that you're, you're fine taking a little hit off of the uh, nuclear power plant or whatever. Right. Um, I mean, another another just tactical advantage of uh, of Tharsis is, and I mean, I don't. This doesn't come up that much when people talk about it, but you can play cities down to take care to take advantage of cards like mining area, right? Like there is a certain advantage to just having board presence early, and like you can put Tharsis down on the opening board in a position where you can take advantage of this super cheap card, and then you know, like. It, these are corner cases, but these are the things that let you win against good players, right? Like you're, you're like, oh, I placed my city here, and then on turn two, I opened a mining area, and nobody else can use it but you. You know, I mean, it's, it's just Tharsis just kind of does it all. You know, um, I I will mention part of part of the reason, another reason that Tharsis is so good is milestones. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit, Nima. Sure. So, yeah, I mean, arguably. Tharsis is the best corp in the game as far as milestones go, and we're again, we're, this is for the base game. So the obvious one is mayor, right? You start with a city. That's a third of the, your requirement right there, and that is huge. Cities are not cheap, so that is a really big deal. Um, what kind of dovetails with this is the fact that you can play, you know, as Tharsis, you're likely going to play a lot of ground game, right? So you're gonna, you might want some plant cards, something like bushes, our favorite card. Um, there's algae, and then there's bushes. Yeah, everybody loves them. <laughs> but uh, so yeah, so then you're likely to get into gardener, right? Um, that's a natural milestone with Tharsis, but it gets even better because as Tharsis, you're gonna be playing a lot of building tags. So now you have probably a pretty decent way into Builder as well. Um, so yeah, it's just like super powerful. There's lots of ways to get into Milestones as Tharsis. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, in retrospect, they, they just should not have put a building tag on Tharsis. It's, it's like, why does right. Tharsis have a building tag? I mean, it, it's, it's just, come on. I mean, really? Like, <laughs> they had to have a building tag too? Um, I mean, it's already, it's just so well positioned to take mayor. Um, and then imagine imagine the way that you get to mayor is you play Cupola City and you play Corporate Stronghold. Well, guess what? Now you just got three building tags too, right? Yeah. And in order to play those, you probably had to have some power. And so you got another building tag from that. And like suddenly you've got mayor, a crap load of MC production and four building tags. Like you're gonna, you're gonna be strong for builder. You know, like they, they feed into each other, um, you know, so it, it is a big, big tactical advantage um, in terms of these milestones and they're flexible. So like because you start with a city down already, you can you can see what other people are going into and you can head them off at the pass on that one while still preserving your supremacy in the other one. So like. Let's say somebody's going for Gardner. Well, okay, I mean, you can lean into Gardner and race them for it, but they can't, like, if you beat them, it's not like they're going to turn around and get mayor, right? right? And if they play the city first, you're like, okay, that's cute. You just gave me a bunch of MC production, and I'll just standard project a city, and now you can't beat me on that one, right? Right. So it is very difficult. If you're, if you're playing somebody who's good at playing Tharsis, it's really hard to prevent them from dominating milestones. Um, you know, like we talked about, Terraformer comes late. Like that's just that's just a milestone that just comes later in the game. You cannot force your way into, into Terraformer quickly, but you really can force your way quickly into Mayor, Builder, and Gardener. Yep. All right, one other thing I wanna talk about before we give it ratings, um, just, some, just some other things is that because you put a, a, a city down early, it is an advantage in some ways, but it can also be a disadvantage. Um, there are cards that people are going to want to play, like Industrial Center, um, you know, things like that. Like, um, 
Restricted area would be another one. Restricted area, yeah. People love putting that down, you know, like right next to your city and stuff like that. And you know what? Like this is just the price of doing business. You, you, if you're playing Tharsis, you got the best corporation for the base board. You know, like it's you're gonna incur some hate, and you just have to understand that that's fine. Um, there's some things that you can do to minimize that damage. You generally don't want to place your cities right next to each other you know to get maximum points you generally want to float them a little bit further apart so that people can't get two points with uh you know a card like commercial district or something like that you don't want to set people up for these cards because they're already looking to play them against you um another one is like urbanized area although if somebody's playing urbanized area against you and you're playing tharsis you're just like cool whatever like i'll just take my right. points you know um so, and sometimes, honestly, you want to play urbanized area and just set up just some like huge point, uh, point areas for you. But the point I do is, have, yeah, so, sorry, finish, finish, finish what you're saying. I was just going to say like, the point is you, you gotta, you have to understand that people are going to play these cards against you and you want to, you want to place your cities down in such a way that they, they do the least amount of impact if they, if they do that. So, so I do want to talk about that a little bit because you know, as early as ep our first episode, we advocated putting cities down in like a triangle format, right? To to maximize points out of it. But I I don't know. Maybe I guess the more we played the game, the more it's just really hard to do that and not get devastated by these hate cards. Is that what? Would you agree with that? That's a great point, Nima. Um, I I still think the triangle formations are, are good. Both the inverted and the standard are, are really good, but you don't want to put them down early. Um, yeah. So what you what you ideally want to do is you want to play cities early to get territory, just to like carve out some territory, and then as you build up plant production or you have the means to put plants on then then you you like you can like put a toe in the water and put a plant down and then if you're if nobody like builds a city over there or whatever then you can come around on the next turn and like play a city and play a plant and like finish the grid you, you know what i mean like mm -hmm. right because if somebody's paying 25 credits a standard project a city next to one plant you're just like okay whatever that's fine you you took one yeah. point from me and you spent a ton of money and you gave me a bump to my economy <laughs> right so it, it th floating one plant out there next to your city is not that big of a deal. And then the way you get into the triangle is that it comes back around to you at a time when you can play a city and a plant and complete it, right? Like you don't want to like city, city, city in a perfect triangle grid and then just watch somebody go restricted area commercial zone, you know, like right. that. So, I mean, that's, but it, you know, whatever. If, you, if you're Tharsis and you do that, you deserve it. <laughs> Brutal. It it is actually so annoying though sometimes when like you're playing you're playing a game and somebody just does that they just like tharsis out in a perfect triangle on turn two and you're just like and then they don't get punished and you're just like come on like really oh, that like just lights me up when that happens. <laughs> well, I guess you got to be the one to do it. All right, so I think that people can tell from this discussion where we're going with this. Um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna come out and give a little mea culpa on this one. I I used to not think Tharsis was the best. Like I always thought it was good, um, but now that I've played more, it's quite clear that Tharsis is the best corporation on the opening board. I mean it it just it's path to milestones, its ability to generate mega credit production. Um, they're, they're just put it, it's starting resources. It, it's just in a, it's in a category of its own. I mean, you, there are draws that you can have that are not, that are not great for it. You know, like just kind of just an opening set of 10 cards that's not that great. And in those draws, you, you could make a case that credit core is better just because it's a little more flexible, um, but Tharsis is just a house. It, it it is a flat A on the opening board. Yeah, I I probably go A myself. I I was kind of vacillating between that and an A minus, just because it is a bit more dependent on card play. Um, but yeah, I I think I got to go straight A. It's super strong. The the milestone like capabilities alone is just so, so strong. 
I will say I'll make two comments about Tharsis. One is that it's a lot. It's a. It's not as good on the expansion boards. And, no, not um, even close. Because a lot of the power of Tharsis comes in its ability to dominate milestones on the opening board. I mean, if you're playing Tharsis, you you generally should get two milestones. I mean, I I mean whether it's Gardener, Mayor. I mean, you're almost always going to get Mayor. And you, you generally can compete for Gardener and Builder. And often you'll get all three. I mean, particularly if you're playing people that aren't you know, super experienced or really cutthroat, I mean, they'll leave you that window open and you'll get all three. Um, it's just hard, it's hard to get Planner and Terraformer fast enough. Um, you know, I mean, Planner, you yeah. can. You can get Planner quickly, but like, you know, it's not a common strategy. And Terraformer's hard to get there fast. So... You're just often going to be able to compete for two, if not all three, of the milestones. Yep. All right. Well. Well, second that... comment. Second comment. Last oh, thing. Yeah. I know it's turning into a long video, but um, you know, I mean, who wouldn't want to hang out with us? You know, <laughs> hang sesh, Nima, and Nate. The last thing I say is that there are some ways that you can combat Tharsis if you're playing against it. Okay, and. You know, the reality is that if somebody chooses Tharsis, the other two players should be very cognizant of the fact that the, the Tharsis is playing in that game and that they should both do measures to lessen its impact. So the number one thing that you can do is think about the way that you sequence your cards. So, you know, like maybe don't play as many cities, right? Like you, you, can, you can look to build your economy in other ways. Um, like I see this sometimes where I'm playing Tharsis and I look at the end of the game and there's 15 cities on the board and it's like they, I, and I played like five of them or something. The other players definitely did not play optimally. You do not want to be building a ton of cities when you have a Tharsis player. You still need some, right? You're going to need some area and some board control, but don't build 15 cities like that. Like you don't, you don't need to do that. You're just, you're just completely helping uh tharsis well, what if um, you're like eco line build one to start with you're going to end up like if you end the game with two cities uh and and then play your third city late like on generation nine or something like i mean you don't need to play all those cities early the second is you need to push for milestones quickly like you can you can you can limit some of the impact of tharsis if you stake out a milestone very quickly and yeah. you push towards it hard, it really puts Tharsis to the question about whether or not they want to compete with you on that. So don't let Tharsis back end into Builder. Like if you if you want to make Builder the one that you're gonna do, like get those cards down early and, and like stake out your claim on it quickly. And if you're the third player in that game, don't fight that person for Builder. Go for Gardener or something else because the thing is, the way that Tharsis wins is when players two and three are both feeding into Tharsis' strategy and competing with each other for milestones, which lets Tharsis get multiple milestones, right? So like, this is, this is a lot of complexity in combating it, but if I'm playing a Tharsis player and I see that somebody's going for Builder, like, I'm not gonna compete with them on Builder. I'm gonna go find something mm. else and try and take the third milestone so that Tharsis only gets one. You can almost never prevent them from getting one, but you can you can usually prevent them from getting two if you're careful. And the thing is, if you're able to nerf Tharsis on its milestones and you don't feed into its its like city playing ability early, then it's just a ground game corporation, and those usually are not that good. So but you you have to think about these things early because if if you're playing somebody as Tharsis and you're just like oh well I'll just play a few cities early and then like I'm not going to worry about these milestones you're just going to get completely demolished. Yeah, that that's those are good tips, man. I I think that's a really good point. Yeah. All right, man. Um, you have cool. any final th final thoughts on? Uh... Yeah, I don't know, man. It's a it's taken us a long time to get through these corp videos, and we're sorry about that. But um, here we are. Uh, we've gone through all the corps in the base game, and uh, who knows what we'll do next? Uh, maybe maybe we'll start our series of just looking at every single card. Um, but in either case, we hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, 
there's a there's plenty of other corpse and stuff to talk about and expansions we'll see maybe we'll do those some other time but uh yeah um let us know what you guys think about what we said do you agree with us on our on our takes were they were they too hot for you <laughs> um and yeah make sure to follow us on youtube and twitch at cardboard from mars follow us on twitter at cardboard mars and um we'll uh we'll talk to you later i'm nima and that is my good buddy nate thanks guys thanks keep, for listening we'll catch you on the next one keep terraforming <laughs>